Good evening. As most of you are no doubt aware, an action plan to make the administration both responsive and effective has been drawn up after many months of hard work and it has now been approved in principle at least if not in all detail by the state chief ministers meeting under the presidentship of the prime minister. About time too one might say given the state of the country's governance which has run down to an extent as to raise the fears of it being virtually on the verge of collapse. After all, there is the dead weight of massive corruption, malfeasance, arrogance, oppressiveness and downright incompetence. To discuss what this plan aims at and how it hopes to achieve what its objectives are, we have here the cabinet secretary, Mr. T. S. R. Subramaniam, I think the right man in the right spot because he very probably wrote the bulk of this document and it is going to be his responsibility to implement it. So, Cabinet Secretary without any further preamble, maybe plunge into the subject and the first thing I want to know is this, that the talk of administrative reforms to clean the administration, to make it responsive to the needs of the citizen, nothing new. I distinctly remember the day when Jawaharlal Nehru called in Paul Appleby. Uh, he produced a report, many other experts came. Then in Shastriji's time, the Administrative Reforms Commission was appointed. Mr. Murarji Desai was his first chairman. Then Mr. Hanuman Taya presided over it. People might have waded through the voluminous reports that were published, very learned reports they were, but nothing very much happened. How is the present exercise going to be different? Well, Mr. Malhotra, before I uh, answer or before I touch on the uh, the main uh, topic that you have raised just now, or rather the, the point you have made just now about uh, what is new, uh, let me add a comment on your uh, first remark that uh, things are on the verge of collapse and things are in. Uh, I may not share the perception. I think uh, uh, we have uh, in the last 50 years uh, done many things about which we can be very proud. I do not think we should run away with the thought that things are in bad shape. There are some pro political problems now and then, but in fact the country has shown great resilience in handling these political issues. Democracy has come to stay here. It has taken roots here despite the multifarious problems that we have. Uh, uh, ours is a thriving, functioning democracy and our scientific achievements are great, I think, uh, despite various problems. I do not want to delve on that, Fair but enough. that is outside the range now. No. Let me just say that uh, uh, things are not desperate or collapse. On, on the contrary, I would say. On the other hand, the quality of governance needs a close second look now. We have to look at how, what is the interface between government and people. What do the people think of government? Ultimately, government is for the people, it is of the people in a democracy. I think the, the, the timeliness now is that we need, I think it is the right time now, to give it a new momentum, probably it should have been done long back, to make it a citizen friendly government. The distance between government and the people is still very large. Uh, people have got the feeling that uh, the services, uh, the, the facilities, the opportunities are only for those uh, who are either politicians or who are civil servants or those who have got a reach into the system. Uh, the, <coughs> uh, the, uh, the arrangements, uh, the, the benefits of society are not available to the common man. So, I think it is uh, a timely exercise to, to redirect uh, our, uh, uh, the, way we, the way we govern ourselves. What is different from Appleby, etcetera? I would not like to look at it like that. I would like to look at it like this, that the previous administrative reform systems looked at reforms within the government, uh, inter say between politicians and bureaucrats between departments, uh, hierarchy in government departments. To my mind, the, 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 uh, the critical element of a democratic government, okay. that what is the relationship between government and the common man, that had been missed out earlier. So, those were all important exercises, but I think this is the main departure point. The, the new reform process today looks at the common man as a citizen 
as the focus of the reform and rest is developed around that. Okay, I will come back to your other comments later, but this is a good point to say, then can you, there are nine points which have appeared in the newspapers, but can you specify two, three, four recommendations or schemes of action wherein uh, this point that something is being done for the citizen today which was not the case uh, in the past. Yes. Uh, firstly, it is not the, the, the reform process is not nine action points. The nine action points are really the, the start or the base today what was agreed by the chief ministers and the prime ministers conference. So, this is really the starting point. Uh, it is a process, it has to evolve, it has to continue. In fact, uh, more than the nine points we have made here, yesterday two or three additional points and maybe the chief ministers, it has now sort of gone onto the wagon. You say, you ask the question, which is more critical or which, which two or three you would identify? Yeah. Well, I would not, each one is important in its own way. But let me say, the, the right to information, transparency is a key area. It now means that uh, it is not government and people are somewhere else. It means that the, whatever government does is known to everybody, it is open. It is inherent in uh, the way of functioning that every except where national interest is involved, security interest is involved, everything. This is one area I would like to stress. The second area I would like to stress is the issue of decentralization, uh, devolution of powers from center to the states, then from states to districts and district to sub-district formation, panchayat formations. And this has been talked about, but it has not become a reality in India in, uh, in, in very substantial manner. This is the second broad area that I would say is a key area. The now third instance, what is the kind of power mm, which today people have to maybe from any corner of the country have to apply to New Delhi and mm. from tomorrow or the next year or mm. next month it can go to the state headquarters or the district headquarters or to the panchayat. Only give you an example, a lot of uh, uh, project clearances come from uh, the states mm -hmm. to the center, a lot of uh, clearances for if you want to uh, lay a road somewhere, if you want to get uh, uh, electricity uh, um, substation, uh, not substation, electricity project generated, mm -hmm. still a lot of mining leases, so a lot of these at various places. Approval for certain programs which ought to be done routinely with the states should not come to Delhi. Similarly, the states control at the state headquarters, a lot of approvals and clearances which should be given by the district director, by the district panchayat raj officials, district uh, elected officials, I think please. So, a lot of it can be done. Mm. The third area, as I said, the four areas I thought are critically, the third area is the question of uh, simplification of procedures and review of all laws. Many of our laws are, uh, uh, our Electricity Act for example, is 1860 something. Now, we want to run our television media, we want electronic media with the changes which have happened with an instrument when at mm. those days television was not even dreamt of. So, we, there is a this mismatch here. There are many other laws affecting the common man. Our IPC needs, uh, Evidence Act needs some redrafting. Number of things, uh, cr criminal procedure pro code needs redrafting. Our Companies Act is now uh, being revised. So, this is one broad area. The fourth area I would say I think is that we need to redefine the relationship between politicians and civil servants in so far as uh, administration at district level is concerned. There is a lot of interference, officials roles are not well defined. So, I think we have three actors there. We have the non-officials, we have the civil servants and we have the local panchayat officials who are sort of formal uh, system officials. We have to redefine that. Uh, so, there I think these are the four critical areas. There is unfortunately the fourth element also which is the brokers of power and influence, the lobbyists. I don't want to say that, but you have said it. Yes. Precisely, okay. yes. But I think, uh, okay, I think this is a very key area. Uh, the problem is very acute. Uh, I think uh, in the Chief Minister's conference, somebody was outspoken enough to say that the politician, that the civil servants, you know, politicians believe are all stick in the mud bureaucrats. <laughs> they are <laughs> colonial era people. They are not bothered about, they don't have to get for votes, etc. Whereas they look upon politicians as corrupt populist, you know, having nexus with the criminals and others. There was someone else who would said that, and this is what I have believed, because you see, after all, there is a history. There was the emergency, there was the pre-emergency era, there was the post-emergency era, and then there have been all kind of things. Uh, the politicization of the bureaucracy, whether at the district level or even at higher levels, unfortunately, is a fact of life. Yes. Now, that has to be depoliticized. There is the, the question of there are lots of bureaucrats. I am not saying that many. There are lots of politicians. 
and there it's, I float around, I see the government from a vantage seat, I am not an insider. There is enough evidence that for every politician willing to or wanting to bend the bureaucrat to his will, there are quite a few bureaucrats who are quite happy to bend over backwards to do his bidding. There are some who would not, but there are quite a few who would. Now, this is one area which has to be attended to. Secondly, since you are the headmaster of the civil service and especially of the highest civil services, therein lies the difficulty. Now, in your own state to which you belong as a cadre, not as a, where you come from. I come from UP. Yeah, no. You also belong to UP. No, 35 years. 35 years I've yes, lived in UP. Your, I belong your state to UP. Is UP. Uh -huh. And that is one state where the peers, the younger IAS officers, have agitated, or at least very extraordinary kind of agitation, that they want to hold a, some kind of a referendum to identify the most corrupt people. If you also forgive me, uh, there is an impression around that UP is not the only state, but it is the latest one to join it. There is an impression around in the country that caste, which is a very powerful element in this country's polity at the moment, has now made its inroads into the civil services also. The old spirit, the core is gone, and there are occasions and places where the services get uh, polarized uh, according to caste. And the politicians also exploit that factor. The transfer is another matter which I like to keep it separate because that is a separate issue. Now, this is a very major log jam and this log jam goes back many years. How do we break it merely by administrative action? That is why I did not say that I subscribe to the belief that the country's administration is on the verge of breakdown, but there is a lot of people and it is after all beginning with Hawala to Gawala, all various things that have happened. Uh, so, in that view that I was mentioning, but that is outside the province of our discussion, but how do we break this? If we can do this, that the civil servant is emboldened enough to give the right opinion, it is the politician's decision to take policy, it is his responsibility, he is answerable to parliament or state legislature. How do we break this logic? Well, uh, in the first place, uh, my, own my own view is that uh, the civil servant by and large in India still is straight, is honest, is responsible and is responsive to public needs and uh, by and large he shares a very large burden, uh, hidden burden but very large burden of governance in the country. I think that is the reality both in uh, uh, and also he is generally held up in fairly high respect by the common man. I know most parts of India the district magistrates looked up to as a fair independent person, so that is one. However, of late, the last five years, ten years, uh, maybe a little more, uh, the fa some of the factors you have mentioned have come in, casteism have come in, communalism has come in. Uh, many civil servants have uh, 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 taken to, uh, to having uh, a relationship, so to speak, with uh, politicians. Some with the politicians of any hue, others identified with politicians of a particular color. So, we have had these increasingly. With this, uh, some element of corruption has come in also. Uh, I would not like to exaggerate the problem, but the problem indeed is no. serious. Not it will be become not to be played down. Should play it down. Mm. And it will become cancerous very, very soon. In that sense, it is critical today. Mm. So, in, in other words, the, the dimensions of the problems are that in our governance, a cancer has crept in. It is still controllable, it is still manageable in my view, mm. but it is not overtaken the body politic, in which case we should talk about it. We should think of a new system. So, I think the system is still capable of reform internally, but it has to come from three sources. One is the, what we are talking of the code of ethics. With this now, you would say how is it different from the previous code of conduct? Mm. There are very significant differences yes. if you mm. see that. Mm. One is we are now talking explicitly as we are doing now, mm. that civil servants are now ex explicitly forbidden to have liaison with politicians for personal matters. We are now going to, with yesterday's mandate, we are going to sort of fine tune the system and develop it in such a manner, where we find in an impartial manner that a civil servant is using politicians for personal advancement, we are going to bring it down officially as a factor against him. This is to inhibit systemically over time. This is one number of other critical differences sure. are that. So, it has to come from within. Secondly, it has to come from within the political system. After all, ours is a democracy. I cannot talk of uh, politicians versus bureaucrats. Both of them have to work together.
to, to, to govern the country, to manage the country, administer the country. So I think there has to be in the political side also a greater understanding of the problem mm -hmm. that uh, using civil servants for immediate uh, temporary gains is going to be harmful in the medium and long term. There has to be thirdly greater public awareness. Public have to understand that if there is a connection between civil servants and politicians, mm -hmm. it is uh, it is the uh, when two elephants fight it is the grass that suffers sure. yeah. i think th these are the three elements here mm. and i think uh, okay now there are three very important matters here and i'll take them one by one one is transfer uh, i've tried to look at the bureaucracy i think you are entirely <coughs> right today there is no doubt about it i think more than the political class the bureaucracy is you know trusted more than political class, bureaucracy and everything else, the judiciary is trusted. That's why even when there are legitimate complaints of judicial activism or judicial excesses, the people still look upon judiciary as a protector, eventual protector of their rights against the executive and the legislative. Uh, uh, you know. I get the impression, and I've asked various people in various positions, transfer seems to have become an instrument of subordination of the and that is why I was somewhat distressed to discover that the good chief ministers assembled yesterday were agreed on many things, but they don't want. After all, the disciplining, if you are going to introduce the system that a corrupt uh, uh, bureaucrat is to be exposed and expelled, an honest one and a competent one is to be rewarded, mm -hmm. then this is something which only the peers can judge. Though this can't, shouldn't become another patronage by an outside agency. And therefore, the idea of a civil service board, which is not the final authority, but which at least is an instrument to make sure that it is seen to be fair. Now, if that is not acceptable, then this scheme does not work. And this transfer, how do you end this? There are two separate things here. One is the question of rewards and punishments. Mm. Our system has been too bland. Mm. It has not allowed any distinction to be made between uh, Yes, some outstanding officers, yes, yeah. and some very, very bad people. But uh, the run-of-the-mill officer, we can't distinguish between good and bad. So we are going to have yesterday's, with yesterday's mandate, to, to have a system to fine-tune it and say, how do we, in a fair, impartial manner, without prejudice to the legitimate rights of the officers, mm -hmm. how do we do that? That is one chapter. Mm -hmm. We come to the other question that you raised, namely transfers. I think we have to uh, analyze it one level deeper without looking at politicians or bureaucrats or any. I think the moment we come to the conclusion or the moment we say that the civil servant is one of the instruments mm. for social change, delivery of services, reaching things to common man. Fair if and you impartial administration. Fair, fair and impartial administration, which includes all these, yeah. including law and order. Mm. If you say he is an instrument, mm. then that instrument will have to be there for a while to understand the local area, to do a particular job, to learn the details, to stay there, etc. Now, unfortunately, the politician feels that the civil servant is not doing his job. And by shifting him from place A to place B, place B it is not that he is going to do the job better in place B. So, it has become a kind of uh, compulsive movement. Pressures have come when an administrator uh, at all levels, uh, yeah. even district, sub-district, a very good one, if he generally does nothing, he manages to stay his period. The moment he starts doing things, clearly he will fall foul of one or the yes. other vested interest, yes. local interest. The moment he treads on somebody's cons, mm. that man makes a beeline to the state headquarters. Mm. Immediately he reaches his power source, namely the, the political executive there, and says this fellow is being a nuisance to me, irrespective of whether that person is district level, sub-district level, you know, even, the, even uh, station officers, we are having this problem right. of being controlled from. I think this is a very, uh, this is a very uh, dangerous trend. And uh, it has two or three implications. One is officers get totally demo demotivated. They are not bothered. They don't feel it is their government. Mm. They feel they'll take the salaries and stay there. And the more they don't do, the more successful they are. This is one dangerous trend. Mm. Secondly, the frequent transfers, the public is a real sufferer. Because after all, he's supposed this, the man is supposed to be there to deliver some services. If he changes every two months, the real loss is that of this. Thirdly, administration uh, suffers. So I think it is important we should have uh, uh, transparent procedures for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, transfers. We should have predictability. Uh, tenure norm should be there two years, three years, or five years. When the norms are violated or changed, I wouldn't say violated, are, are changed. Yeah. If somebody has to move, it has to be either for some very personal consideration. 
no so a yeah. person has a personal need had to yeah. move or some delinquency which has to be established or pointed out some inadequacy which is recognized yeah. it should not be arbitrary and yeah. off the back of the envelope sure. you move you move which is not good for the system as a whole so what we are now trying to say and chief ministers yesterday they they were lukewarm to the idea of the civil services board but practically every one of them mm. spoke in favor of more transparency uh, regular um, tenures tenures not to be interfered with and consult a good consultation with the bureaucratic system mm. before transfer and postings are effected in fact some states already have well established procedures the problem is not in every state no i would say half the states have very good well, well established procedures may i raise here a question which is rather <coughs> sordid but i think it should be faced there is a talk i think you are quite right uh, obviously things are you know better at the center than they are in the states things are variable in various states but where things are bad mm. there is a talk of certain crucial jobs practically being auctioned <laughs> which 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 raises some very dangerous question now mr atul bihari vajpay when uh, before he resigned for want of vote of confidence he did say on floor of parliament that he had been told by chief minister that the jobs of the chairman of electricity boards uh, you know they command a very nice price in fact he mentioned figures in crores of rupees and earlier you spoke about this whole problem over electricity so is there some way you can do you use this plan to get rid of electricity boards and let the electricity no, no that's a separate thing i mean sure. firstly we need reforms in all the sectors economic sector social sector uh law and order sector we need reforms yeah. everywhere mm. let us keep that for the moment aside we can come back to it if you like mm. but on the sordid question that you raised maybe uh, maybe there is some truth here and there uh, of this mm. and it is a growing malaise mm. and uh, it is getting more significant it needs to be tackled and we are trying to do that we are now saying mm. if there is predictability there is a proper way of judging a person if there is a pro appropriate social audit of everybody who performs his functions mm. an outside agency looks in a very mm. fair impartial manner we will reduce uh, your uh, room for uh, a lot of these i would however agree that the crux of the issue is in reducing the interface between government and the common man mm. make things more and more automatic uh, get things available uh, more freely i think these are no. really the uh, i is very happy to read in the summary of this plan the idea that we are some approval of any government department a citizen certainly needs then instead of his running from one place to another let there be firstly procedural uh, tardiness should be done away with secondly speedy disposal should also be by a single window mm. i was very happy to read it but on reading it as also reminded that we are wedded to the single window doctrine in the matter where the need is ours as a country foreign investment we have promised single window quick clearance to so many foreign investors good lord ask them they say that single window doesn't work now how is it that we if it doesn't work for those who are bringing in money here and money that we desperately want well, how do we have single I'll window I, when somebody wants a favor from the government i would not really be uh, so you uh, know you know my own experience would probably be different mm. it's a process mm. at any point of time you will have people who are unhappy because it has taken time but if you see the uh, sea change that has taken place over the last 5 6 years mm. in approvals in fact many approvals are no automatic uh we we hear of the, uh, the the sort of papers the 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 cases in the newspapers mm. also for don't forget some of the new power plants which are uh, uh, these are all the last couple of years they have come and the system is still groaning to readjust mm. to new ways of doing things so once the first case gets cleared the kind of things are done counter guarantee cases for example for mm. fast track projects we are no practically broken the back of that once that is done we now know enough about fuel linkages mm. we now know about about uh, tariff notification tariff calculations it has been so the, the remaining 20 30 40 cases which we, we hope will come in the next couple of years will be two month three month processes rather than two year three year processes no mr subramaniam prime minister yesterday made a very interesting point because the first time that uh, uh, one has heard this uh, very refreshing acknowledgement that while economic liberalization is a good thing must be done 
it itself is breeding its own brand of corruption. Yes, and those poor chaps who have lost their money in that CRB bank or whatever it is, yes. they can testify to that quite apart from what else that has gone on. Uh, now, uh, this problem having been at least noted today, will something be done about I'm sure, this? I'm sure, I'm sure of that because with economic stabilization, lot of things are becoming more automatic. But it also, in a sense, provide more opportunities uh, to people to deviate uh, from the main line. I see. I must interrupt you here because the key question, the last one, is that you're quite right. The higher civil services have great respect in others. Although accessibility is not there, you ring up any bara sahib, <laughs> is always in a meeting. Returning calls, hmm. returning calls is a very rare phenomenon. But how? Uh, no, no, leave that. The common man about whom we started talking, which is the key to this matter, the citizen. The cutting edge for him is the policeman on the beat who beats him up if he is strays into the path of some VVIP and the security itself has become a great menace to citizens' right. The SHO at the best. He goes to get his electricity connection, the kind of harassment and, and the demand for money that is made to him. And similarly, all these little things. Now, this is the cutting edge. The cutting edge is not the cabinet secretary or the chief secretary. Certainly, district magistrate is much nearer the people. Uh, however, these are the people, uh, the same fellow who sends him the inflated phone bill. Or the worst example that I can mention to you is that 13 years have passed. Those poor victims, many of now alas dead of Bhopal gas tragedy, have not got their compensation. I don't know when they'll get it, uh, administrative reforms or no administrative reforms. Now, how does one get the first thing moving at the cutting edge? See, I, this is, I think, what uh, I'm trying to convey here, that it is a process. The whole thing has to change now. Attitudes have to change all over. A mindset has to change now. The kind of authoritarian regime that we have inherited from the British and that we had continued for the last 50 years, that government is the dispenser of services, is the provider of uh, services, mm. and the citizens can queue up and line up and take it. I think this attitude, this is the crux of it. So the mindset, attitudinal change, where in we have to bring in new economic players for provision of uh, all the things that you said, provision of electricity services, provision of rail services, uh, rail may not be, but other serv telephone services, private actors have to come, so that government is not the sole provider, a competition is uh, provided to various sources. Procedures have to improve, and there is inordinate delays in procedures everywhere, Bhopal gas tragedy elsewhere, legal procedures have to be looked at, our laws have to be looked at to see that we can deliver swift succor to the people. But These are some of the basic changes, sir. this process encompasses all of the things that you have said, yeah. right down to the… Uh, this is stupendous task and I do hope that in this you have the support and guidance of your political master with the Prime heartwarming. Minister and, and to get support of your peers in the civil it service. It was heartwarming Prime Minister within a month has agreed to hold this meeting. Uh, every chief minister agreed or in principle to practically everything that has been said. The resolution passed said that they will have political will to implement these and they will come back. As far as the bureaucracy is concerned, it's an instrument. If good direction is given, they will respond extremely well and positively in, uh, in this direction. Well, thank you very much. I think on this happy note, we can end. Thank you very much, Ms. Malala.